Welcome, my name is Tracy Smet and I am with Ministry Points Sports Medicine, here to give you a re review of my presentation, Creating Your Personal Plan. The objectives of today's presentation is to understand key points of nutrition, understand how much exercise is needed, determine the types of exercise, and plan an actual exercise program. So let's begin. Now I always tell everybody I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not going to preach about things that I'm not 100% knowledgeable about. But I do know a few nutrition keys and these are my top five. One, never skip breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Two, eat within 30 minutes of exercising. After your exercise, your body is at a state of dehydration and so you want to be able to put nutrients back into your body that you have lost while exercising. Number three is to drink water. You should shoot for at least eight glasses a day. That's what's recommended. Um, I personally use my Nalgene bottle as my example. The fourth one is to taste the rainbow. And what I mean by this is getting a variety of fruits and vegetables on a different color scheme in your diet. Each vegetable and fruit provides different nutrients for you, so you want to make sure you're getting a wide scope of them in order to accommodate all those nutrients for your body. And the fifth thing is never tell yourself you can't have something. I, a long time ago, had some difficulty with drinking soda and somebody bet me I couldn't give it up. Well, it is very difficult to give things up and once you do, all you want is that specific item. So have things in moderation and never tell yourself you can't have something. This is one of my favorite quotes um, and I know it's not very positive but it is kind of funny when you think about exercise and how we think about it. So it says exercise is a dirty word. Every time I hear it I wash my mouth out with chocolate. I think it's very important to understand why we do things and how much we actually need. So when we talk about exercise, the American Heart Association and the American College of Sports Medicine just recently updated the actual activity guidelines that an average adult needs. So what these guidelines say is to promote and maintain the current health you're at, you need to either do 30 minutes of moderate intense activity five days a week or vigorous intense activity 20 minutes a day for three days a week. In addition to those cardiovascular exercises, you need to have at least two days of strength training during that week. So, to lose weight, we actually need to do more than what these guidelines are saying. The guidelines are saying, again, to maintain the current health that you're at. So if you're looking to lose weight, you are going to have to do more than those recommended guidelines at first. Once you get to the maintenance stage, then you can pick up on those normal guidelines. So let's talk about how much we actually have to do. These are some simple guidelines. What I recommend is starting with 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, four to five days per week. I know we're kind of borderlining what the actual guidelines are, but getting started on a regular program is the first very important key. After you've been maintaining those 20 to 30 minutes, four to five days a week, you're gonna to wanna to add about five minutes every week. You can add five minutes overall or five minutes each session. A little bit of progress will do a lot in the end. I like to tell my clients to work towards 60 minutes a day. I think 60 is a nice round number and most adults have an hour in their day that they can use for their exercise. You do want to make sure you have at least one day of relaxation training or a rest day, which is also called. And never do more, no more than 90, 90 minutes excuse me, per session. I think if you get too much into your actual exercise program, you could actually start to backtrack and cause yourself to relapse. So I want to talk about the four types of exercise. Now everybody classifies them differently, but this is how I classify the exercise. I break it into cardiovascular training, strength training, flexibility training, and relaxation training. I'm not going to talk about flexibility and relaxation training today, but I am going to hit on cardiovascular and strength training since those are the recommendations that are given by American College of Sports Medicine and the American Heart Association. So as I indicated before, I think it's very important to understand why we do something. I feel that if we know why we're doing it, we want more ops to continue to follow this specific program. So when we talk about cardiovascular training, the reasons behind actually doing it 
is because of the different benefits that it provides for you. It provides muscle strengthening of the lungs and the heart. And I know if you've been through cardiac rehab, they talk about this all the time, how important walking is or running or jogging, those types of things are. The second thing is it improves the circulation and actually reduces blood pressure. About two years ago, we had a gentleman come through the community weight race who had high blood pressure. His doctor said, you need to go on medication. He said, give me one month to try to lower it, and he did. The second thing is you want to know is that cardiovascular training reduces stress and stimulates bone growth depending on what type of activity you're doing. Now that bone growth is very important, especially for us women and older women because as we age, we always hear about osteoporosis and what we need to do to strengthen the body. So doing cardiovascular training will actually provide those results for you. So begin, before you begin any type of cardiovascular training, you want to make sure you know what your heart rate zone is. Um, heart rate checks can be done fairly easily by taking them on your wrist or on your neck. Most fitness facilities will show you how to do it or have a chart similar to this. When you look through these zones, you want to be in the 60 to 70 percentile zone, so in that green or yellow zone there. So take a second now, find your age, and find what zone you should be in. By the way, this is a 10 second heart rate check. So there are many types of exercise out there. Most times they're classified into three different groups, no impact, low impact, and high impact. The no impact group is morely for those that are starting to begin an exercise program or have had some type of physical condition that inhibit them from doing low impact and high impact. For instance, if you've had a knee or hip replacement, you may want to consider doing a no impact or low impact activity versus a high impact. There are statistics out there that talk how much weight is actually incorporated into these activities. For instance, when you run, 20 times your weight is pounding onto each of your leg, joint, bone in your body every time you take a step. With walking, it's slightly less. So thinking about those impacts may help you find which activity is better for you. Okay, this is where it times to get a little tricky and I usually lose most participants. I'm going to try to break this down for you. Cardiovascular training can be broken down into a few different types. Everybody, again, classifies them differently. My favorite models are what I'm showing you here. The first one is a flat rate, which is indicated by this straight line. You're just walking at a certain distance or pace, nothing's changing. That's probably what most of you are doing right now. Pyramid and valley training are almost the same. Pyramid means that you're starting at a specific distance or incline on the treadmill, for instance. You get halfway through, you increase the incline steadily, and then you decrease it. Valley would be just the opposite. And random training would be that you're changing the intensity, you're changing the incline a whole bunch of different times throughout the workout. It's never staying steady. Now, many different machines out there have these four programs already in their system so all you have to do is select that kind of workout. If you don't have any types of equipment you can create these workouts on your own just by adding a faster pace or a slower pace when you're walking or biking or running out there in the real world. One specific type of training that I want to talk about is HIT training, high intensity interval training. So there are a variety of studies out there that talk about HIIT training as being the most beneficial training for burning fat in a short and intense workout. This is great for those of you out there who have limited time during your day to actually perform the workout. Sessions should vary between 9 and 20 minutes and you should use a 1 to 2 work to rest ratio. You're looking to perform between 8 and 12 cycles of that work to rest ratio. So for example, in my workout, I do 30 seconds of work, which is a sprint for me, and 60 seconds of rest, which is a walk. By the time I get done doing 8 cycles, I have completed a 12-minute workout. Now, I do want to caution you with HIIT training. You want to make sure that you have at least one day of rest in between workouts for your own safety and in preventing injury. So let's change gears again and let's talk about the strength training, the actual science behind it. Strength training is a great activity to help raise your metabolism. We always talk about how muscle burns calories more than fat. It also helps strengthen the bones, tendons, ligaments, and muscles, which many of you probably already know. It does help improve coordination and balance. If you look at a variety of the strength training exercises out there, 
they require you to have some coordination with the actual weights. So it's a great way to improve that. And that's another thing that we lose coordination and balance as we age. So we constantly need to work on it. And it can help reduce risk for injury. Now again, just like the HIIT training and the cardiovascular training, you do want to make sure that you are having those rest days incorporated into your workout. These rest days are really important for your muscles to rebuild and grow. Every time that you work out, you actually tear your muscle just like you do when you pull a muscle um, in an injury um, kind of aspect. So during that time, it gives your muscles a chance to rebuild and regrow in and, and again make you stronger. So I think a lot of people get caught up on the strength training lingo and get slightly confused about it. So let's go over a couple of definitions. A set is a group of repetitions. A rep is how many times you actually do the exercise. For instance, I take a weight and I'm doing bicep curls and I do 10 of them. I take a short rest period and then I do another 10. That would be an example of two sets of 10 as displayed on your slide here. Now there are some great websites out there that show you how to do different exercises. This specific website um, I find to be fairly easy because it has video and verbal and written descriptions how to perform many of those exercises out there. So there are many ways to strength train. These are the two types that I find are the most easiest if you're starting an exercise program. The first one is train by muscle group. So I've broken down the different groups of muscles on the slide. And what I'm recommending is you pick one exercise from each muscle group and perform a certain amount of set and reps. The other option is to do a train by day type of training. In that case, you're going to do upper body training one day, as indicated on your slide, and lower body training the next day. That gives you the opportunity to do strength training every single day. And like I said before, there are many different ways to train out there. These are just the two that I'm recommending. I like this quote by Edward Stanley. Those who think they have no time for bodily exercise will sooner or later find time for illness. I think that is very, very true. So with that, let's get into planning our workout. Step one is to find a time that works for you. Now you can use that exercise planner that I have posted on the website and in the newsletter as another tool to actually develop the specific program. Step two is to pick a location. Where are you going to work out? Is it at a certain facility or is it at home? I do want to caution you, if it is at home, make sure you talk to your spouse and your kids about this being your specific workout space during the specific time that you set. I think it's really important for the family to understand that you are trying to work towards this healthy goal and that they need to respect those decisions that you are making. Step three is to decide which type of training you're actually going to do. Is it flexibility, strength, cardiovascular, or relaxation? Now I get asked many times, Tracy, American College of Sports Medicine is telling me I need exercise. Five days a week cardio, two days a week strength training. That's seven days. Where do I fit in a rest day? Well, there are many exercises out there that do overlap on the types of training that you're doing. This chart here is an easy reference to see which exercises actually do. So what you would want to do is maybe do one of those overlapping exercises instead of doing one that's just a, a singular exercise on its own. Now I do want to caution people, when you do need professionalized seek it, but be careful. Your, the complete health and wellness field and fitness field is flooded right now with people of a variety of educations and backgrounds. These are different types of people that are out there that I would recommend if you need any type of exercise or fitness questions. You do want to caution yourself again and ask them about their educational and background. Where do they come from? What is their knowledge? If the person has never worked with someone in weight loss before, you may want to consider finding somebody else before actually working with them. Ask to see their certifications and be judgmental. Would you take an advice from somebody if they were overweight? And always remember, a little bit of exercise is better than none at all. So thank you for joining me. My name is Tracy Smet. I'm with Ministry Point Sports Medicine. And if you have any comments or questions about today's presentation, please do not hesitate to contact me. Have a happy and healthy day.